Where is it? Where is it? Anyway, how long does it take before it comes up? Anyway, I want to go on to something else. We'll see if it comes up. If not, I'm going to have to try it again or something. Uh, yes, something a bit sad that's happened today. So talk about the leap year being bad luck. This is bad luck. So for those of you, probably especially in Britain, but I don't know if this uh, program goes out around the world. But um, something very sad today is um, for any of us that like the hairy bikers. One of the hairy bikers has passed away. He was poor, he wasn't he? He had cancer, Dave. Um, drives me mad when it does this cuts off with adverts and things. So, yeah, the hairy biker star Dave Myers has died, age 66. Uh, and I knew he'd been, he had been very poorly, hadn't he, with cancer, bless him. Um, though he's been filming programs, etc. Oh, god, it's gone into Shane now. What the hell is going on? Oh, it's a nice dress, actually. But uh, I don't want to be looking at the dresses. I want to see about Dave. Um, yeah, and his co-star, Cy King, who actually, Cy is my favourite. He's another one who's taken, otherwise I could have been proposing it to him today because uh, I just think it. Would, I've always thought it would be really nice to be married to one of the hairy bikers because you would never have to cook anymore. And they're funny as well, so they keep you entertained. Um, yeah, so very sad. Uh, and he, you know, he had been, um, he was, two years ago, he was uh, diagnosed with cancer. And apparently his death has been announced by his co-star and fellow motorcycling uh, chef, psyching who said he was with Myers when he died peacefully at home. Oh, he was with him. Oh, it was yesterday, Dad, so they're announcing it today. Um, that's nice that he was with him because they were very good friends. You know, they genuinely were good friends. But sometimes these partnerships on the TV, etc., they're not actually good friends, are they? But apparently they really are good friends. Um, so very sad, that. Uh, so his wife Lily and his family and close friend David were by his side. King said in sigh said in a statement on X, "I will miss him every day, and the bond and friendship we shared over half a lifetime. I wish you Godspeed, brother. You are. Oh, I'll just start crying in a minute. You are and will remain a beacon in this world. See you on the other side. Love you." So it's a bit of sad news today. And of course, when he you could see that he'd lost a lot of weight, you know, since he was diagnosed with cancer, because he was, you know, a little bit, let's, uh, uh, how do we put it? So, you know, a little bit chubby, let's say, but more to love, all the more to love. Um, and then, of course, he was diagnosed with cancer and he did, he did lose weight because chemotherapy does that to you, doesn't it? So he shared that he had cancer on the Hairy Bikers Agony Uncles podcast in May 2022, but he did not specify what type he was suffering from. And in interviews in 2023, he said there were times during his chemotherapy uh, treatment when he'd been too ill to walk and unable to ride his motorcycle due to be being unsteady now this is just remind me i haven't lit my candle yet today that i normally uh i would have a candle on but i had classes it earlier before this live so i'm going to light the candles this time so the candle not only for samantha and for finding rachel marin's killer and for anna Knezevich, who is uh, being hopefully her case has been sorted in spain um a little candle for dave as well so he returned to filming uh, towards the end of the year. At least, at least he got to do one last series as well. But you can see he's lost an awful lot of weight there. And he's been seen on screens travelling from Scotland to Devon in the latest BBC Two series, Hairy Bikers Go West, since the beginning of February. 
less. And ahead of the program airing, King praised his remarkable, sorry, Sai, I should say, praised his remarkable co-star saying, it's a series we'll always remember, not that we won't remember others. Oh God, I am, I'm really choking up now. We are very privileged to do what we do and I think this one was particularly special in general because of Dave's health and his sheer and utter determination for what he does. Oh, and that was him with his wife when he was obviously... You know, the trouble with chemotherapy is that chemotherapy makes you ill. They don't know if it was a cancer that made him that, that lose all that weight, but chemotherapy doesn't do doesn't do any favours, does it? Especially to continue to do it while he was having treatment took remarkable courage and energy and adds to why Dave and I will not forget it. So he initially worked as a makeup artist. Oh, I didn't know that. And he met Sai in 1995 while working on a TV drama called The Gambling Man. And their first TV appearance together was The Hairy Bikers Cookbook in 2004, which was part cooking show and part travel programme in which they rode the length of Portugal. And that started that partnership, didn't it, that just went from strength to strength. And over their 30-year friendship and career, they published more than 25 cookbooks. Yeah, I always used to think, God, wouldn't it be great? You know, your husband was a hairy biker, one of the hairy bikers. <laughs> He'd never have to cook again. So he also delighted fans when he was taking part in Strictly Come Dancing. He was partnered with Karen Hauer and reached week seven of the BBC competition and they made every viewer feel like a friend. Yeah, they were. You know, I think that's why people liked them, because they were so natural. And when they were talking to the camera, like you felt like they were talking to you, I always felt that, feel that Sai is talking to me. And I always think, oh, gosh, yeah, look, it'd be lovely getting home from work and just him bringing your dinner out. Um, so leading tributes to the TV chef, great British Bake Off judge, Paul Hollywood said it was terrible news, while Chef Andy Oliver said her heart goes out to Maya's family and friends. And Charlotte Moore, who's the BBC Chief Content Officer, she added that everyone at the broadcaster is incredibly sad to hear the news. So very sad, you know, uh, just seems like he was a lovely man, doesn't it? So Dave made cooking a truly joyful adventure and he shared that joy with millions, she said. The public loved him and his unique partnership with Sai. Together they made every viewer feel like a friend. More than that, he was simply a lovely man. Our thoughts go out to his family and many friends. So a little bit sad news today, but, um, you know, it, uh, yeah. You know, what can you say? I mean, just uh, sending love and prayers out to his family and friends. And, you know, I'm glad he got to make that um, that last series, you know. So it's, uh, we're going to miss him. You know, I do, I do, I think, the thing is when somebody like that, uh, it's like when Matthew Perry went uh, from Friends. So I think if you've grown up with, well, I haven't grown up with the hairy bikers, but, you know, watch them. And you do feel, don't you? You don't know them. Obviously, you don't know, you know, but you feel like you know them. And it, it does feel like losing somebody you know. <laughs> so that, uh, getting to do the cleaning. Well, you're good at cleaning, aren't you, David? So you tell me. So, uh that, I don't think that membership came through, did it? So I don't know why. Don't know why it didn't come through. That's happened to me before. That's another thing, because once I bought five memberships and only four came through. Uh, and now I've just got that membership and um, it hasn't come up. Maybe it's because it's my own channel. I don't know. Maybe I should have done it on a different channel. Anyway, I'm going to look into that. I need to look into that. 
I like cooking if I've got plenty of time. If I've got plenty of time, I'm happy to cook. I enjoy it. What I don't like, you know, you just you get all you if you've got like if because I'm um I'm well I'm slow with everything that I do, so I'm a slow cooker, let's say. So, you know, uh, my son, if I say to him, oh, because he does his own cooking, but sometimes I'll say, oh, do you want me to cook you something today? And he'll go, what time will it be ready? <laughs> What's it? And I go, oh, I don't know, because I don't I don't sort of cook like that. I just start, you know, get a glass of wine out, uh, you know, start preparing everything. And then uh, sometimes it's not till I've chopped everything up that I even think what I'm going to make. Because I might be thinking, oh, I'll make a curry or I'll make a paella or I'll make a, a something. But, you know, I sort of chop. Because I always put the same things in everything I make. There's always mushrooms. Put it that way. There's always mushrooms in my food. So uh, I, part of the fun is, like, you know, preparing it. But I like to have time. So what I don't like is, like, when I've just finished work or I've only got half an hour, you know, lunch break or... I don't like cooking them because uh, it's just too much hassle and I end up having just toast or something. So that's when I'd quite like a hairy biker to say to me, oh, what, you know, what time are you wanting your lunch? And I just say what time and, uh, you know, I say what time and then um, it's ready like magic. But, uh, yeah, my son, is he's a good cook. He's occasionally cook. He doesn't cook for me very often, but occasionally he does. He makes pancakes he, or he can make pasta or, and stuff like that. He can make chicken, Kiev. He can make a lot of things. He's quite interested in cooking when he's in the mood for it, you know. But I think you have to be in the mood for cooking, don't you? Because that's me as well. Oh. Yes, my son does his own washing, doesn't very often do mine, but sometimes he does. I mean, he can look at, I think basically at the end of the day at his age now, he can look after himself. He has lived on his own um, and he's good at cleaning. Though I normally have to give him a little incentive to do a bit of cleaning, you know, pay him a little something. Um, but that's fine because uh, it's better than me paying somebody else to do it, which costs me more. Um, because sometimes I just don't, you know, my house, it's not really, it's not what you wouldn't call it a big house, but it's on a lot of floors. So there's a lot of stairs and there's a lot, it's just constant. As soon as you've cleaned one floor, you've got to clean the next one. Well, then the stairs are dirty because we have got three dogs. So, you know, dogs cause a mess. <laughs> oh, David, yeah, you're good at cleaning, but for anything else, the guy next door, Sandy. Ah, yeah, yeah, cooking, cleaning, uh, you know, DIY. You need someone for DIY as well. Uh, I can do my own DIY, I've done it for years, but again, I just can't be bothered. <laughs> it's not a question, you know, uh, it, sometimes some things, um, but I get bored, you know, like I'll start off painting. I've got so many unfinished rooms. Uh, I sort of start off painting them and then I get bored. But anyway, I'm waffling on a bit now. Now, uh, 